Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mostro Moto, and uh, today I'm gonna be installing foot pegs on my Yamaha TW200. So the foot pegs that come on this bike stock uh, definitely leave something to be desired. They're really skinny and pretty small, and uh, I wear a size 12 boot, so <laughs> as you can see, I am uh, just barely hanging on there. And uh, when doing some off-roading, I definitely noticed that standing up can be a little uncomfortable on them, especially if you're off-roading for a longer time. And so I went ahead and picked up a cheap pair off of Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. And they're just a little bit wider and uh, just a little bigger overall, so I'm hoping that they will... Nice bike, nice Ducatis, nice, nice. Uh, what was I saying? I'm hoping that because they're a little bit wider, they'll make the ride a little more comfortable, especially for when I'm off-roading. And unfortunately, I don't off-road all the time. I live in an urban environment, as you guys can tell. But uh, I've been off-roading a few times on this bike, and uh, having those bigger foot pegs, I think, will definitely help. And it's funny, uh, that's my buddy Rob on his 2018 Yamaha TW200 and his bike is sweet. He's got a couple modifications done to it already that he's done all himself. He's got a circular headlight, uh, he's got a sprocket change in the rear, he's got new blinkers, um, a little voltage gauge, a little USB charger. So a couple of cool little things, definitely some things that I'm going to put on my bike at some point as well. But uh, yeah, he saw me out here and I uh, was making my video, so we're just gonna go for a quick little ride. Uh, but I'll see you guys back inside my house and I'll show you the foot pegs that I got. All right, so I'm back home from my ride. Um, and for being December 13th, 2020 and 60 degrees out, I definitely can't complain. But now that I'm home, let's install these foot pegs. So I picked them up off of Amazon, um, pretty inexpensive. And the main reason I got them is because they're wider than the current ones on the bike. So I'm hoping that when off-roading and just general riding around town, they'll be more comfortable and provide better grip. So these foot pegs did not come with any instructions. They just came in a little bag like that. Um, they don't have any cotter pins or springs or anything like that, but uh, I don't think you'll need that. You should be able to reuse all the parts that are on your stock foot pegs on the bike. And just in case anyone is wondering, these are also made from steel, so hopefully they'll be durable. The T-Dubs kid has a very similar pair, if not the exact same pair, um, from Amazon on his bike. And he goes off-roading all the time in Colorado, and uh, he really abuses these things. And they've lasted him for a number of years, so I'm hoping they'll do the same with me. So installing these on the bike, it should be relatively simple, and all you'll need is a couple of basic tools. I also have some grease here. Uh, this is just grease I had around the house. So I'm gonna use this for when I put it back on. I've got some um, needle nose pliers and I also have a drill. And the reason I have the drill is I noticed on some of the Amazon reviews that people said there's a little hole here, which I don't know if you could see that on the camera, but there's a little hole there that the spring needs to sit into. And uh, I guess on one of the sides, the spring does not line up with that hole. So some people bend them, uh, which is why I brought these. And then just in case, if I, if I don't wanna do that or if it becomes an issue, I could always drill a little hole into this and that should be just fine. And uh, one other thing I picked up from Home Depot, I just got some extra cotter pins. I have a tendency for breaking these things. <laughs> and uh, if you don't have patience when taking these off, they can kind of be a pain in the butt. But I'm gonna try and save the ones that are on the bike, but if not, you can get a little set of cotter pins for, uh, for like 90 cents at Home Depot. And I'm not sure what size uh, cotter pin is on the bike, so I got two separate sizes just in case. This is uh, 3 30 seconds by one inch, and then this is 1 8 by 3 quarter inches. So a little different. They probably would both work fine, but uh, we'll see which one works best. So let's head to the bike and install these. All right, so I'm here on the left-hand side of the bike, and I'm going to install the foot peg on this side first. And I'm going to want to take this guy, and you can tell which side it is by uh, how the angle is slanted on this. And you can tell that if you put it next to it, that's the side that it's gonna be on. So let's start with this one first. So it's kind of hard to show, but on the bottom of the peg, there's a little cotter pin right here that you have to take off first. There's a better view, hopefully the camera's focused. But so we're gonna go ahead and take that cotter pin out. And then once we take that cotter pin out, that'll allow us to pull this little bolt out and remove the foot peg. And I apologize for the camera angle. This is kind of the best way I could get it, but I'm just gonna turn the cotter pin a little bit so I can grab it with these needle nose pliers. 
and just slowly bend it out. And it might actually be easier to hold one end, if I can get it, one end like that, and then just take your other needle nose pliers and pull the cotter pin. All right, so finally got it. Hopefully you guys can see that, but the cotter pin did slide out. And when taking the cotter pin out, try your best to flatten it kind of like that so it can slide out of the hole. It's definitely easier to talk about than it is to do, but uh, you can usually get them out without breaking them. All right, so moving on, the next thing we want to do is just remove the bolt right here. Push it out with my thumb. You might need like a little mallet or hammer to do this, but mine was able to come right out. And just falls off like that. Make sure you don't lose the spring. And there you go. So look at the difference between the two sizes. There's the stock, there's the aftermarket one. So it's almost double the width. And uh, I think that'll definitely make for a more comfortable ride. And when removing your stock foot peg, you wanna pay attention to how the spring is set up. In my bike, the spring sits in the foot peg like this. There's a little slot where this rod goes into and it slides in like that. And then this little uh, elbow part, when you put it on the bike, if you push it in all the way, it clicks into that little hole over here and that allows the spring to get tension and work like that. All right, and so before installing the new one, I'm just gonna see if it fits, which it definitely fits and it looks correct. It's a little bit stiff, but that'll uh, break in over time. And if yours is too stiff, you could always sand it a little bit because it's probably uh, just a little thicker because of the paint. So before installing this, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of grease. This is the grease that I have. I just had it laying around, um, but I can imagine that any grease should be fine for this. Just gonna put a little there and a little on there and just move it around with your fingers a little bit. All right, just like that. So the next thing to do after you've installed your grease is, the way I like to do this is I like to put the spring in first. It just seems to be a little bit easier this way. And uh, you may have to hold it, but you just rest it there and you put that longer part in the small hole on the left over there. Just squeeze it in, just like that. And now that it's snug in there, uh, you can go ahead and take your little bolt here and just try and line up those holes. Just by wiggling it, it'll come eventually. So now that I've got it partially in, the rest of the way, I just have to feed this pin through the middle of the spring here. And to do that, I've got a little screwdriver to help move that spring around because it's kind of hard to get your fingers in there. And I'm just gonna push on the bottom of it. Just try and get it centered. I'm actually gonna use my thumb. Push it down, okay. Just went in. Keep kind of wiggling it. And it just falls right into place. And a little stiff, but definitely functioning properly. And so the final thing to do on this side is to install the cotter pin back at the bottom here. And obviously the cotter pin is there so this doesn't come out. That would be a bad day if you lose your foot peg. And as you can tell, this is the old one that came stock on the bike. I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that with a new one. And I know it's a little bit bigger, but it should still do the trick, no problem. And for anyone interested, the size is right here. And I purchased that at Home Depot and it was like a dollar for a pack of three. And I apologize, I'm trying to get good camera angles for you guys. I hope this one is okay, but uh, to install the cotter pin, you simply just slide it through that hole, just like that. You wanna make sure it doesn't pull through. Um, obviously, you don't want it to come undone. And then I'm gonna use two needle nose pliers, one to hold the back, just like that. And then the other to fold these little tabs outwards. And you just gotta get it started like that, and then you can come in and kind of get a better grab on them. Kind of a tough angle. I know it's at the very bottom of your bike, but uh, it's an important pin, so make sure you do a good job. This one I can kind of just 
almost bend with my hands. Just back like that. And the thicker the cotter pin, the harder it is to bend and manipulate. But this one seems to be working just fine. I'm just gonna pinch it up just like that. And uh, that should be plenty. So after a little bit of persuasion, the cotter pin is now in place and it functions properly. All right, so this side is all done and uh, let's go ahead and move to the other side now. All right, so we're here on the right-hand side of the bike now and a very similar process to remove the right-hand side. Starting with the cotter pin, you're gonna remove that, bend it backwards, pull it out, then pull this pin and then the assembly should come out and make sure you don't lose that spring. Just bend this piece back, just like that. All right, this actually seems to be working pretty well for me so far. I think I did fold on it. And let's see if that'll pull out. And that one, come on, buddy. All right, that one pulled out. That was actually pretty easy. All right, and once you've removed that cotter pin, you just go ahead and push out this other pin right here and pay attention to how the spring is. You can tell that the longer part is over here and that little bent part, which I know it's hard to see, is sticking out up here. So just remember that for when we go ahead and install the new one. But simply pull this out and it's under some tension and it just drops out and you have all your parts right there. All right, and so for this side, I can already tell that we're gonna need to drill or bend that spring. Um, it fits in well, pretty snug, but that's fine. But the issue is this spring, when installed, is gonna sit like that. And this part that sticks out here on the stock foot peg fits just like that. And on the new foot peg, it should fit like that, but the hole is on the wrong side. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and just drill out a little hole there so that the pin can sit like that. And I'm just gonna line it up at the corner right there Probably better to do this on a vise, but this should work. All right. And that looks like it's all the way through. All right, and back over at the bike with some better lighting, you can see that that hole over there is now on the other side and that should allow this spring to sit in there like that. And that should be good. So same thing as the other side, I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on there to help lubricate it. Nothing, nothing crazy, just a little bit. And just like we did on the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and install the spring first in that little groove. Make sure that that notch is up top and there. And then slowly, gonna feed this guy in there. And make sure that pin goes in the hole and just slide it into place. All right, so now that you've got that spring installed and uh, this is in place, just line up the holes and insert this pin. All right, and uh, don't push it in all the way because it's still got to go into this spring right here. Push that down. I'm using my thumb to push it and just line it up. And it's a little stiff, but you can definitely tell that there is a uh, spring retention on that, which is good. And uh, that should break in over time. All right, and just to give you guys a better angle, that's what it looks like when it's installed. And as I was saying, in that little hole that I drilled, you can see, maybe you can't on the GoPro, but you can see in person that the pin from the spring is in there and it's seated in place. And so now that we know it's installed and that little part is sticking out there as well, the spring has definitely got tension on it. Let's go ahead and install the cotter pin. And once again, I'm gonna be using a new cotter pin for this side as well. Just gonna move that hole so it's lined up better. Push that into place and then use my needle nose pliers and bend it through. All right, and bending that into place, just like that. All right, and you want it to be able to move freely, just like that, and that should be fine, and just make sure that it doesn't come undone. 
All right, and so that's it. Both foot pegs are now installed. Um, obviously the right hand side of the bike, that foot peg was a little bit harder to install because I had to drill a hole. And they are significantly bigger than the uh, stock ones. So I'm pretty happy with how they came out. And for anybody that's gonna be installing these foot pegs the way I did on the TW200, these are the tools that you're probably gonna need to use. And uh, actually, I was using these Milwaukee drill bits, but they weren't doing too good, so I had to switch over to Dewalt and use these guys, but uh, 1 8 did the trick. And then also for the cotter pin size, just to remind you guys, this is the size that I used. Um, I could have probably gone with like a three quarter inch instead of a one inch. They were a little long, but they did the trick no problem and uh, they should be totally fine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hop on the bike and see how they feel. All right, so I'm back out here on the bike. It's a little bit later in the day, I do apologize, but uh, I can tell you guys right away that they definitely make a difference. Having more surface area allows me to move my foot around better on them and just get a good grip overall. I'm not constantly reaching for the foot peg either. They're, you know, they're there, they're meaty. And uh, one consideration, if you have larger feet, the uh, larger foot pegs will obviously limit the amount of room you have in between the foot peg itself and the um, shifter, as well as the brake. The brake, it's not really an issue, but the uh, the shifter, I definitely need to kind of nudge my foot down a little bit more in order to uh, get my toes under the shifter when shifting. But it's really not that big of a difference, and I can only imagine that after riding for a couple miles, you probably wouldn't even notice it anymore. And as far as they feel, uh, they feel like the stock ones. They don't really add vibrations uh, or anything like that. Um, they just feel a little more meaty, a little bigger, and uh, allow for more surface area for your feet. And uh, also standing up, they definitely feel uh, just so much better. They're not putting so much pressure on a small point on your foot. You know, they're dispersing the pressure more, which is nice. I just checked Amazon and I think they were like 24 bucks or something like that. What's up, Scooter Bro? <laughs> so overall, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. They were pretty easy to install. Just had to drill one hole and everything else went pretty smoothly. I definitely recommend getting uh, separate cotter pins. I know you can reuse the ones that are on the bike, but it's just easier and uh, it's better having a peace of mind knowing if you have to break the cotter pin or they come out all messed up, you can just put a new one in. You don't have to worry about saving it. So this is kind of, uh, I guess you could say, part one of the uh, off-road modifications that I'm going to do to this bike. Um, I've also got a skid plate coming. Um, I actually have handlebars and risers, so I just need to make a video and install those. So if you like this type of content, uh, I'd love if you stuck around. If you have any suggestions for future content, or if you have any questions, or whatever the case may be, please let me know. And uh, thank you guys so much for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and as always, ride safe. That's a nice Christmas tree. <laughs>